churches. They dot the landscape. Their history is ancient. But what did they look like when they were built? And what was there before? From quarries to cathedrals, this is the story of church builders. Humans have always built to honor their faith. Ancient burial mounds are among the earliest religious monuments. The arrival of Christianity kickstarts a large scale construction of religious houses. The first churches are often built near ancient monuments. It is a way of adapting people and places into a Christian narrative. It also allows for a more smooth transition into the new religion. However, little is known about the first Christian buildings in Northern Europe. What we do know is that early Scandinavian churches are made of wood, like the one in Herning, near the town of Randers in Jutland. But wood is a perishable building material and something more durable is needed. Stones and limestones have already been used for a long time in many parts of Europe. The new materials and construction methods will also be applied in the north, like Denmark. The founders could have been the local aristocracy. However, Building with stones requires special knowledge, so master masons are sometimes brought to Denmark from abroad. The new heavy materials require a solid foundation. The first thing is to dig a trench. In case of wet or loose soil, oak poles are driven into the ground. The trench is then filled with stones on top of the foundation is a core and veneer wall. Limestone, which is used both as mortar and stone, is quarried or mined locally. We can now take a look at a construction site of a typical parish church. Carpenters prepare the wood for scaffolding and roofing, and stone cutters dress the stones. However, as stones are often being collected far away from the site, alternatives are needed. Fortunately, the art of making bricks is being introduced in 12th century Northern Europe. Bricks are made of clay, which is often found locally in the ground. St. Bent's Church in Ringsted is one of the earliest examples of brick architecture in Denmark. It replaced an earlier and smaller church made of travertine. So far, the churches have been Romanesque. It is a style characterized by small round arches and thick walls, making the interior dark. But light is also important to people in the Middle Ages. Since the 12th century, the French had been working on a style based on pointed arches. The pointed arch makes it possible to build taller windows, letting in more light. The problem with the round arch is the lateral thrust pushing the walls outwards. The pointed arch solves this as it creates less lateral loads on the walls by directing more of the weight downwards. The flying buttresses support the walls and help bring open space to the churches, and thus the thick walls are no longer needed. The style, that will later become known as Gothic, also arrived in Northern Europe and became widespread during the High and Late Middle Ages. An arch is built on top of a timber frame, which is then removed when the arch is finished. The cathedrals are being built over many years, 
sometimes centuries. This means they have been construction sites in the Middle Ages. In the late Middle Ages, porches and towers were added at the west end of many churches. Towers are generally viewed as attempts to reach towards heaven and the divine. The churches of Hardislev and Karup both had very high towers, and both towers are now gone. At Karup, a church in the middle of nowhere, the tower is estimated to have reached up to 36 meters into the sky. Today, Karup Church now only has the size of a large chapel. This is due to the Reformation. The Protestant Reformation in the 16th century results in several changes of the churches in the years to follow. They are simplified away from the Catholic opulence. Religious images are attacked and frescoes are concealed with lime wash in many countries. It also later happens in Denmark. The churches are being modernized from the 19th century onwards. The Romanesque windows are walled off and windows in the south are made bigger. And this is how the churches, as we know them, appear in our era.